When talking about additive manufacturing it is important to understand the different categories and their use cases. While some technologies are used for rapid prototyping only, others are applicable for serial production and thus, understood as industrial 3D printing technologies. According to the American Society for Testing and Materials, there is a total of six different technologies in additive manufacturing. Vat polymerization, sheet lamination, material extrusion, material and binder jetting, direct energy deposition, and powder bed fusion. Let's have a closer look at these technologies. With its inception in 1986, it is actually the earliest 3D printing technology developed. Using stereolithography, in short SLA, this technology works by applying a light source, either a digital light processor or a UV light to synthetic resin. The light cures the resin layer by layer to build a part onto a build platform. The light source can sit below the tank resin and the platform pulls the part out of the liquid, as demonstrated in the animation. But it is also possible that the platform lowers into the liquid and the light source sits above the tank. A great advantage of SLA is its superior detail resolution and smooth surface, which is unmatched by any other 3D printing technology. Further it is also possible to print transparent parts, however as we are using photoreactive polymers the material will also age in sunlight and might brittle after a short time of strong exposure to sunlight. This is why it is typically not recommended to use SLA for production parts or applications with high mechanical properties. Sheet lamination is the most niche technology. It works by pulling a sheet material from one spool over a platform onto another spool. After this the current layer is connected to the previous layer by using a heated roller to bond the layers with adhesive in between the sheets. When the top two layers are connected, a laser is used to cut the contours of the desired part. A raster is applied to the surrounding material to be able to separate it from the part from excess material. Following. The platform is lowered by one layer thickness and the process is repeated. The process exists also for some metals which can be connected via ultrasonic welding. We can combine the paper-based technology with inkjet prints on the contour to be able to create colorful objects. The mechanical properties are however strongly dependent on the orientation of the part and inferior to most other additive manufacturing methods. One must also consider to take out material from the core of an application after building. Material extrusion, which is using fusion deposition modeling, in short FDM, is the most widely spread technology in the consumer 3D printing world. Parts are fabricated with strings of solid thermoplastic material which is being melted and deposited through a heated nozzle. When the material cools down it solidifies and a new layer is applied on top. Thus, the part grows layer by layer. FDM is a great technology because it is relatively cost-efficient manufacturing method and quick to iterate. Different materials can be combined to achieve desirable mechanical properties. But it is vital to consider using a support structure, for angles typically lower than 45 degrees. Because of the rapid cooling rate the connection from one layer to another is not as strong, therefore the mechanical properties are not too isotropic. Material and binder jetting is a polymer-based technology for rapid prototyping utilizing existing knowledge. The technology consists of three essential steps. First step, powder material is being deposited onto the whole build platform. Second step, an inkjet printer is used to apply binder where the part will be built. The contours are typically improved by using a detailing agent. Third step. The material then gets fused using thermal energy. The build platform is lowered and the process repeated until the parts are manufactured. This closed process is relatively easy to iterate. However, it offers little potential for optimizing the parameters for specific use cases.
Direct energy deposition is a metal additive manufacturing method. Either use powder or wire material is used. A nozzle feeds the material into the center of a laser beam and gets instantaneously melted. This technology offers relatively high build rates and good hardness of material. Still, the surface roughness is quite high and requires some further machining in most cases. EBM belongs to the group of the powder bed fusion technologies. A metal material powder is deposited onto the build platform. Subsequently it gets melted with a high energy electron beam, fusing the metal particles together. The build chamber is heated to several hundred degrees in order to decrease the thermal tension of the electron beam. EBM requires the parts to be produced in a vacuum and can only be used with conductive materials. The very high temperature and vacuum makes it a process, which is challenging to control and the accuracy is inferior to other metal additive manufacturing technologies. DMLS is a powder bed fusion technology which means a laser is used to melt powder material. Just as in the electron beam melting technology, the powder is applied to the build platform with a recoder blade or soft recoder. Following, a laser is melting the surface where a part should be built. The build platform is lowered and the same procedure is repeated hundreds or thousands of times until the final geometry is visible. Powder bed fusion can also be used for manufacturing polymer parts. This procedure is then called Selected Laser Sintering SLS. This additive manufacturing method is the most popular method for industrial use cases, as it is able to achieve repeatable high mechanical properties. The technology is however still limited in terms of its build size envelope and the upfront investment is higher than many other AM technologies.